status uh, to make sure that we had an event today. So, Kathy, thank you very much on behalf of the Alliance. And, you know, that's that's what board members do. You're an active and, uh, and honorable board member, and we certainly appreciate it. Our next speaker today is uh, Nick Barone. And uh, Nick is uh, coming from Opera Solutions, automating fraud and threat detection following digital breadcrumbs through big data. All right, uh, you'll note on ITTV at 9.20 every week, uh, we hear from RSA, the Security uh, Division of EMC. Uh, their Fraud Action Labs in Israel comes on the program for two five-minute segments. All right, might be very, very interesting. You can dig some of that up, up on our website and see some of the similar areas to this particular topic uh, that RSA is hitting on as well. All right, Nick, thank you very much for coming today. Thank you. All right, and we're off and running again. Just okay. watch the laptop down here in the wires, all right, everybody? Okay. How many people here have heard and are some, and think they're familiar with the concept of big data or its events? Oh, cool, so I can say anything to they can get away with. <laughs> well, no, not really. I'm going to take you through it, which is good because there's a couple of slides I'm going to take you through. It's the kind of what big data is and, and how do people manage it, utilize it, mine it for signals. Now, we as investigators have all been trained to look at information sources and then applying our uh, thought process, our experience, uh, or listening to others, we then become the human filter, right? And that's what expertise is about. That's what subject matter expertise is about. Is, is, is related to. So, when people think of big data and applications, this is, yes, it is a little big brotherish, especially when I'll talk about some things about mining sediment off the net. Uh, so, we, so big data also, though, has another aspect to it. And what, when we go through that mental process, really, what are we doing? We're putting things into context. So the best example I, I give about big data is picture the ocean. And the Titanic was undiscovered for how many years? And why did somebody, how was somebody able to locate the Titanic? Based on context. And what was that context? Nautical charts, records from other ships, to identify some general location in this vast sea of emptiness in the ocean. So it was that context where somebody started. And then they took a little robotic uh, uh, sonar and they passed it back and forth until what did they find? Signals. And those signals, when uh, looked at and compared against other types of signatures, showed a very large mass made of metal. Now, I talked about a couple of things here to get us started. Signals. Signals are what you're anticipating to see. So the first question is, how do you define signals? So let's, so big data is really a washing companies today. Some examples of big data are, we know about credit card fraud, right? A logarithmic technology. We know about bust out fraud. We know about um, various other types of insurance fraud, right? And what do we do? We take a whole bunch of rules, we put them together, we have our information feeds, we run them through the rule-based system, and then we have red flags. Well, the bad guys are actually big data experts because they know how your systems are, and what do they do? They adjust activity. So again, they're one step ahead of your rules, testing your rules, trying to see how they can perpetrate the next fraud against your company, your business, your process. Well, big data systems today that monitor, they actually adjust. So the, the whole concept here is the next generation of applications are not going to be those standard big enterprise resource type of programs that you see that transact data. What they're going to be is programs that are attempting to take huge quantities of data and 
mine that information based on a set of signals, and create what we call actionable insights to make people act. And, and one example is uh, the company I work for participated several years ago. Uh, everybody familiar with Netflix? Okay, have you ever seen the Netflix recommender? Right, it says, if you liked this movie, you'll love these five movies. And sometimes you may get so hooked you'll never come out of your room for the entire day. So, we, my company actually placed uh, tied for first in creating the recommender engine. So there was a thousand data points for a person who could select a movie based on content, based on a variety of things. And then ultimately, if a person select that one, then it became different movies, different categories, different data points. Maybe you'll like those movies. Most of it is unstructured, stale data. So uh, if you want to go out there and you know, you've got this massive data, and, and one example I talked about since we've got HGICA is that uh, you know, the free space on a hard drive, right? So when we do, let's say, computer investigations, what is the first thing we do when we get the image? We look at it and we say, based on what I know, the context, I'm going to look at a series of files. Now, picture automating that. Picture saying, I know I've got an insider trading investigation. And to the untrained investigator, here is the files on the hard drive we recommend you look at first. And then the other files. And that's what we call average mind plus machine equals actionable insights and decisions. And that's really the 100,000 foot about big data. And big data solutions actually occur in three areas. We have transformative solutions. That's your custom signal hubs. We want to look at this today. And then what we want to do is turn around and mining that information. We want to create actionable insights from it. So we have to define those custom signal hubs. In some cases, it's a performance accelerator. So imagine, if you will, where you have a sales team going out there every day, and there's a record of sales that somebody's selling something really right, and somebody is not. And this is something that occurs in the financial industry. Uh, hedge funds vary into this, looking at performance. right? And performance for two reasons. Beyond the traditional compliance, you're looking at what are the set of conditions today in the marketplace that have caused a strategy that is projected tomorrow for the basis of executing trades. And it's that recommendation, the predictor. So what we try to do is we try to look at trends, and then we try to create what we call predictive analytics. Recommending where we think you should go or recommending where we think this should happen. And I'll give you a perfect example because we're looking at bust down in a new way. Okay? One element of bust out is account takeover, where a person is not truly knowledgeable that their account that accounts can take over. And I've worked in my career on a number of heel lock investigations. Okay, heel lock investigations. Following credit line, <coughs> person doesn't open up their line of credit. Next thing you know, you're looking at, you know, a bill for half a million dollars and your credit line's been well, in the process, there is signals again. And what are those signals? Well, we look at it as you know, on a transactional basis, right? We have a lot of logarithmic rules that look at things on a transactional basis. But there is additional signals in the bus down. It starts sometimes with a simple change of a phone number. And then it starts with a dialogue of a person wanting to call. Now, we call that identity theft. But isn't the the signals of identity theft also a precursor to other potential fraudulent transactions? And don't we know that people in their best interest in call centers can actually, they can accidentally give up personally identifiable information? We've heard it, we've heard of this, and I've listened to enough tapes in my time, right, where honest people make honest mistakes. So it's those kind of indicators. The people who, let's say, fall beneath the performance appraisal, plus the increase in LinkedIn. You know, suddenly you've made a lot of new friends in a very short time. Well, either you're popular or you're setting the stage to book out because you're really a thief. You know? And I'm not, I'm not really saying that. You get the, you get the link there, okay? 
combined with your resume on the internet. These are the kind of things that people are mining today within the company, and they're putting them together. And, they're, and then they're taking that, that form of information, and then they're doing other things with it. So the second type is software-like analytics heavy, is, what, is really how we describe it. 